So this is basically about going from uh, 3D to 2D in concept art. And for me, this is something I've gotten into a lot in the past year or two because it's incredibly useful. I want to make sure your perspective is correct so you don't have to worry about that. Like, make sure to do that after you've learned the fundamentals, though, because you don't want to just use it as a cheat or as a kind of a crutch. But once you've learned perspective, it's really useful to use because it makes it just saves so much time so you don't have to worry about making sure all your vanishing points and whatnot are right. The next thing I use it for a lot is to really help give myself a base for my concepts. Um, because I end up doing mostly environments now, environments and interiors for uh, Beyond Skyrim stuff, freelance, sky and whatever, um, these just really help give it that extra kind of realistic feel. And it's a lot easier to iterate on your composition, um, at least to me, in 3D, specifically in Blender, because all you, all you really have to do is, oh, if I don't want this wall there, I can just move it instead of having to like erase it, redraw it, make sure the perspective is right. You can just grab it and move it to the left or something. So uh, this is the image that I'm going to start off, that I'm going to kind of walk you guys through my um, process for. Um, uh, one thing, if you have any questions, again, just uh, wait till the end. Probably I'm not really looking at the Discord too much. So the kind of brief, the idea for this was that it was going to be a kind of country ranch or a kind of um, larger house that was, that's been taken over by a militia in sort of post-apocalyptic world, um, i.e. like Days Gone or Last of Us. So it's really interesting trying to try and get that sort of same um, lighting and set design. So the first thing I do, obviously, is, um, as Nara said, reference is your best friend. Um, I have four main um, kind of categories for reference. I have like the my abandoned category, and that's for what I'm looking at as for how I want the degradation and the um, decay of the environment to sort of look. I have my hotel. It was initially going to be a hotel, and I just changed it to a... Um, like a ranch manor thing. And that's how I want the architecture, the shapes of the actual building to look like, and that's going to help me figure out my layout and materials mainly. Next, I have my lighting, which is um, how I choose um, like what sort of lighting setup I want, and that helps me figure out how intense I want my lights, and, um, the sort of atmospheric haze and so on. The next is I have my military work, and that's basically just it's sort of clutter, and that's really going to help the set dressing. So first off, I looked and I looked at my uh, the hotel stuff, and this is basic. This is a lot of just going around and trying to figure out what the layout was. So I knew I wanted it to be a manor house, and not manor house, but a ranch. So you basically just start by googling a bunch of these and trying to figure out what shapes and sort of designs you really like. And the first thing that stood out to me is I really liked all these wooden struts and I. And all these the sort of two leveled um, uh, design. And a lot of this, you can see it goes by there's stone, there's wood, and then there's like a light plaster. And that's always a really nice color combination, especially if you want to give it like a, a warm light source, because that, that just really helps kind of give it, there's a sort of, um, a sort of glow. Again, just going through these, taking what I like. Specifically, like this stone fireplace, that's something I wanted. I knew I wanted to keep in. Um, this, I like the sort of slanted ceiling and the, and the use of larger windows to try and emphasize the natural light. Uh, this is small, so I'll just skip over it. Um, and then that's pretty small. Again, I, again that fireplace, as well as the, the multi-level kind of wooden story. And then finally, um, where is it? Well, I had a uh, a reference that I used a lot for the layout, but it seems to have disappeared, so I'll just go without it for now. Um, after that, I went to look at sort of how I wanted the um, abandoned areas to look. So this is just a lot of looking up. There's abandoned buildings, factories. So you see this really nice. Um, yeah, let's see if I found okay. Like all this, um, like the wallpaper peeling, you can see the plaster beneath it, and then beneath the plaster, you can see like the bricks and stuff. That was mainly what I was looking at, especially here. You can see all this really good clutter and um, kind of just visual noise on the floor. 
And that really helps to kind of key in like the level of not cleanliness, but how much debris I want there to be on the floor. Specifically here, you can see that again. And this is what I used for reference. There's a there's that back fireplace. I use this mainly for the reference of how I want that stone to look. And next, I want here's my lighting, my lighting reference. There's not as much here because I already kind of had an idea of what I wanted. So you can see the main thing I really tried to get um, shown through here is kind of a really strong um, main, kind of main light source. And the idea is that there's a little bit of haze so that you can get a really nice bloom effect and the light will um, bounce around neatly through the, not neatly, but in a more visually pleasing way through the structure. And finally, here's just a couple um, kind of military clutter references that I'm looking at, like these boxes and this bunk. Mainly, I'm just kind of looking at how those are arranged, sort of decals and such that are on them. Um, how this sort of like weapon rack and this cot is. Oh, I just saw this cat. I actually didn't notice that. Actually, but there's a cat. Um, sorry, that was a bit off topic. But mainly what I'm looking at and stuff like this is how they have these sort of like tarp, tarp-like um, things hung up, as well as how this cot is arranged, what they have next to it, so on and so forth. Yeah, and then here's just another kind of debris pile that I'm looking at. And this is kind of what I'm using to figure out how I want. And all this is really mainly useful for the set dressing. So I can kind of break it up into these categories. So this, uh, this is basically the layout. And then these two are for set dressing and obviously the lighting. So now I go into Blender and I start building it. Um, it should be on the Blender screen right now. Let me know if it isn't. Okay, so basically what I start out with is it's basically just you get your plane and you put some scale people there. And then what you do is basically, it's really simple really, you just like start with the wall and you just start building it out around. Um, turn so you can see it's, it's, it's obviously really rough, but you don't need it to be really fancy, you just need to have the shot that's in your camera, and that's all you really need to make it look good. You need to focus, just focus on what the camera sees. Like you can see, I, I, I broke open this wall back here, and now this, when I was lighting it, there wasn't really enough light back here, so I just broke it open to get a little more ambient light. And you can kind of do these little cheats like that to make the overall outcome look better. So basically, as you can see, it's you can see I'm just bringing in all these elements from the reference, right? Um, I'm not going to turn the materials on because that'll fry my computer if I try and stream and do that at the same time. So sorry about that, but you'll see them in the image once I get to it in Photoshop. So basically, like th these um, materials are all that sort of worn plaster, as well as I obviously have this fireplace. I kept in this sort of two-tiered aspect that I really wanted to keep in. And all these kind of wooden accents, they're all kind of helping to bring together this sort of color palette that I'm really trying to, color and texture palette mainly, that I'm really trying to go for. After that, uh, I added, I started doing materials. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this without killing my computer. I think I'll just set it to rendered. All right, so this will take a little bit just because I don't have the best computer. It's running this on a Mac laptop. Uh, the basic idea behind running the uh, doing the materials is you're looking at your reference um, a lot. Basically, that's your guiding light, and you're just kind of trying to build the texture around that. And what I'm using for textures mainly is all right. Here we go. Here's its rendering, and so give it a second. And here for the textures, I'm mainly using um, MegaScan's assets and materials, but as well as I'm building some of my own. So you'll find like images that you like, and you just start building out and kind of cheating with the um, environment. Ooh, my voice cracked. The sort of environment maps around that. So here's the sort of basic material setup that you have. Um, yeah, sorry, I just got through all this. So here's the basic material setup. So it's basically, as you can see, it's this worn plaster. We have wood, nice wood. There's some rusted metal, stone. And then on the floor, what I did is I added some, uh, it's mainly wood, but I added some imperfections to it. So I found this really nice dust kind of mask. And you go through and add that to the, the roughness map. Um, let's see if I can show that actually. 
I'll go back to solid. Give me a second. Go to shading. All right. So I can show you guys here. All right. So here's my uh, material setup. So it's actually a lot more simple than it looks. It looks kind of like a mess, but it's really pretty simple. So basically, we have these are my two main images. This is the wood texture that I have. And this is that, um, and this is the that sort of dust decal that I have. So this, it's pretty simple. It's uh, let me move this around a little bit so it's not as in the way. All right. So basically, here's just um, different maps I have. So here's my albedo, and that's just the diffuse color. Uh, it's just the, it's the flat color that we have. Oh, sorry about my mic. Yeah, I'm just using my earbuds. I don't have like a fancy mic, so I'm sorry about that. Let me know if it gets too bad. But I don't have, so yeah, you're just my albedo, my roughness, which just kind of shows, um, figures out how the light is going to bounce off it. My normal, which does more of that, except it just, it figures more of the, not the topology, but the, uh, like the surface distortion. So like if there's like bricks, there'll be it'll um, add in like shadows where the back of the brick would be and so on and so forth. Next is my displacement, and that's uh, that's what really helps bring this stuff to life. Again, sorry I can't really show it just because my computer is not great, and you can see it's kind of chugging a little bit right now. But what the displacement does is it basically will actually warp the mesh in a di in um, accordance to a map. And that's really going to help bring in a lot of that 3D texture that's going to help. Those, are those little details that help bring it to life. After that, again, here's the, it's, this is basically the same idea. And then here we have, it's, it's a mixer node. It's an add-on I have, so it's not going to come default with Blender. But what it does is it allows me to plug two textures in. And there's different sorts of masks I can add. And here I just have a grunge noise mask. And this allows me to kind of mix it around. Oh, so this isn't the grunge noise. Yeah. So this allows me to just mix it around in order to get a nice blend of uh, blend between the two uh, textures. Then here's just my outputs, and this is just what's plugging it in to make sure the actual material shows up. Okay. So the last thing I'll do I did before I went on to set dressing is I figured out my grass. And this is a uh, this is a process I've actually sort of recently just learned, and that's uh, weight painting. And so what you do for this is you, I have a uh, grass. I have it turned off. Ooh, okay, my computer. There we go. So here's my grass, and what you basically do is you grab, you go to your materials, not materials. You go to particle properties, and you uh, you just you instance it around uh, um, the plane. So you basically you go to hair, you change it to hair, and then what you do is you basically just mess around. Um, here, I don't really want to change too much just because I think it'll burn my computer out. But basically, what you can do is once you have the particle, the particle in this instance, the grass, it basically randomizes it um, throughout the plane. What you can do is you can change how much you want um, the seed, which kind of just changes the distribution of it. Um, you can change the length, and so on. But again, um, I'm sort of reading the, uh, the lecture also. Let me know if you have anything that I'm not making clear. But this is the first one I've done, so I'm not going to be the best at it. So just let me know if there's anything you want me to talk a little bit more about. As well, we can obviously wait till the end. So in order to get the actual the shape the grass into the shapes that I want to kind of constrain them, what I did is I went to weight painting. And what you can see here is the red. So the the warmer the color is. Yeah, so the warmer the color is, the more um, grass there will be there. So if I paint here, right, you can see there's gonna be grass here. I'll just undo that. So the way I do this is to make is so that the grass has sort of a more natural, not fall off, but distribution throughout the plane. 
and keeps it constrained to where I want it to be instead of just everywhere. Let me turn the roof back on and I'll go into the camera. So next, what I went on to do after materials and that is I did set dressing. And this is where you really make the whole piece so it kind of come alive. So this is where I used a lot of that abandoned reference and the military stuff in order to kind of to fill this place out and make it seem real. So what I started doing is I started um, getting crates and um, all these sort of like little debris things, debris assets, I should say, and just populating them throughout the, the, uh, the space, right? And what you really want to consider in here specifically is your reference again, because this is something that's designed. It's not just randomly placed, right? So as we figured, this is going to be a sort of a military encampment. So what I have around is, zoom in, give me a second. Okay, no, let's go back. Okay, so what I have around wait, are all these sandbags and guns and sort of ammo crates around. That's because I want to make sure it gives that sort of militaristic feel. But also to make it feel ramshackle and abandoned, obviously I have a bunch of like cardboard on the floor and um, kind of just stuff placed haphazardly, like all these crates, these guns stored in, not, like, probably not the best spot. Um, and to finally what I did is I was, I was kind of, I had a really empty mid-ground, so I was really trying to figure out what, I, what to do to make it feel more alive. I was like, obviously, what does a, like an encampment have to have in those beds? So I basically just got this um, little mattress asset, and I did some cloth simulations on top of that. That's an atom that I have for Blunder. Um, again, sorry, it's probably not the best to show because it'll find my computer right now. That's kind of the running theme of this. But I want to kind of talk about more the design behind all these than the actual technical aspects. So I think, feel like that works out OK. So these are just um, cloth simulations that I dropped on top of here to make the to kind of just show that they're like trying to cover up and keep it nice and tidy, but failing that, failing at it. And again, um, here, let me, I'll go to rendered. This will take a second and I might break my computer again, but we'll see. But the main idea behind this is I really wanted to make it feel, um, one, militaristic, cluttered, haphazard, and that they're really just, just getting by. They're not like thriving, they're just doing what they are, what they can. And I'm hoping this will render soon because I don't know. There we go. All right. So you can see this is basically the final render I get. Um, it's going to take a second to kind of load in. But this is the final render that I get. And what I wanted to do with the lighting, again, um, kind of as I talked about in my, in my reference section, is we have this really strong main light source back here. You're not going to be able to see it because I just have the background on transparent. That helps me um, add the background in Photoshop later. But we obviously have this main light source in the back. And that's really uh, what's kind of lighting up the whole scene is bouncing around. But if you notice, I also have um, a couple other light sources to kind of offset that. So this, since this is such a warm light source, I obviously I wanted to add a cool one to kind of balance it out. So I have this open window with like the blues that you get from the sky bouncing out here to try and kind of counteract that a little bit, as well as some sort of ambient blues coming in from the skylight. All right, that should do it for Blender. So let me go to Solid. A second, and then I can go into Photoshop and talk about my process there. So, um, is rotated, but that's all right. So something I do a lot is I'll ro just rotate my canvas. I'll just flip it left and right, and that's what it, what that does is it sort of just gives me a sort of fresh eye to look at it. So I've done that a lot. So sometimes I'll just forget which way it was initially supposed to be, and this is what it was actually at. So when I get my um, When I get my render into Photoshop, there are a couple of key render passes that I get. And render passes are essentially um, different ways that you can have Blender output an image to show you different information that can be in, um, needed for painting. So here, for instance, here's my ID pass. And this is something that's 
probably the mo one of the most useful things that I um, have. And this basically helps me. So if, say, I just wanted to grab this wall, I see since everything, all the different objects in the scene are coded to their own color, you can just grab the wall and boom, you can just paint in it. You don't have to worry about going through and making selections of it each time. As well as you know it's going to be accurate every time, which always helps. After that, we have our albedo. This is just our uh, albedo or diffuse pass. And this is just our flat color, so no lighting information. It's just the flat color from the images. And this I'll use sometimes if, some, if I have a shadow that I don't want to be completely dark. So I can just um, add that. Like I don't want to be completely black, for instance. So I can just add a little bit of the color back into it from here and go on my way. Next, I have my mist pass. So let's turn this off. There we go. And this is one of the most useful things because so the way this um, works is basically takes the camera and you can program an endpoint and to Blender, and it just basically makes it the farther away from the camera it is, the more um, thick the fog is basically. And what this does is it really helps to add in a lot of atmosphere to the uh, piece. Alright, so I can turn these off. So, one of the first things I do is I add in some slight color grading. It's going to be a little harder to see in here. But what this does basically is what I've done is I have uh, made the tones a little warmer, just a tiny bit. And then what I've done here is I've added a lightened layer with. Uh, a, a sort of a mid greenish gray and what this did well it's not greenish it's um kind of just a mid low gray so it's like kind of dark gray like 80 percent i'd say and what this does is it makes sure the shadows aren't completely black because when i was looking at style guides so specifically like last of us work um i noticed that all the shadows they're never quite like 100 percent black right so what i do for this is you have a lighten layer and what Lighten does is it basically constrains what is in your layer to keeping only within the shadows or the darker elements. So the darker it is, the more trend, the more opaque your the image in this layer. So if I turn the fill up more, you can see what it's really doing is it's just making sure the shadows aren't completely black. So this takes a little bit dialing to make sure you're not overdoing it like this. Obviously, this will just make it look weird and weirdly flat. So you just want it to kind of help pick the image up a little bit, but not too much. And after this, what I'm really going through and uh, is that, sorry, what I'm really going through and doing is uh, kind of dialing in the values on this piece. So usually I'll work foreground to background. So let's see if I can find it. So. I'm just going through and using the curves, um, the curves tool, man, the curves tool. That's pulled up in the wrong in window. I don't. There we go. And this is basically just darkening the. Uh, it's just bringing down the light values, so that way I can. Let's bring it back to what it was. Bring down the light values, so I can get a better read in the image. So working foreground to background, it's it's the easiest for me because it kind of helps me go through the read how I would see it generally. So then we have the walkway it's going through again with the curves. You can see I've added some more bounce light on the bottom of it to really just bring through that effect and you'll see why in a little bit. How oh, is this layer? Oh that's just a little light layer. And then obviously I have this this wall again is just to really bring it in and make sure that white is essentially king. Make sure it's the most prominent piece in the image. Next, I'm kind of going, and after this, uh, let me should go through the background actually. Here we go. And this is kind of what I do to tie the whole thing together a little more. Um, and this is just really bringing down the values on the, on the right of the background, or the mid-ground, I should say. And this really helps kind of, oops, I double tap, there we go. And this really helps to sort of tie it in. So if you can see before this, it looks a little too too bright. 
And this really helps dial in the mood that I want. And it's not like a super happy mood. As you can tell, I thought the blue of this sort of tarp, this tarp mattress thing, was too much with the um, intense blue light I had. So I just changed the color to make it a little yellower. And that also helps to make it feel a little dirtier and a little more um, deteriorated. Uh, after this, I went through and just added some little effects on the, on the walls of the of the background right here. As you can see on this fireplace, what I've done is I, I've added some little highlights to really just try and uh, consolidate the source and make sure that the piece has the same light source. So to do this, again, my favorite thing curves. I think this is the right layer. No, it's not. It's the wrong thing. Here we go. Yeah, so this is this is the layer I use, and this is the curves layer again. I use that a lot. Um, it's just really easy, and you have so much control over it. So what I did here is I basically just duplicated the, I added, a, obviously, a curves layer. Um, make sure to lock it to the outline of the fireplace. And you basically just um, bring up the brightness values. And after that, you go through and mask it so that there's it's only on this little edge. So that way you, it's probably the easiest way of adding highlight. You don't have to mess with the layer styles that much. It just curves and you add a mask to it. Right. After this, I went on to try and detail the ground a little bit. So what this mainly is, um, is photo bashing. Let's see if I can find the right image. So we, right, we have this image. And this is something I, I found in a, just a really nicely kind of deteriorated wooden floor that I wanted to incorporate some of that sort of debris. And it's just going to add a lot more texture and grit to the image, a lot more visual noise to the floor, like I was mentioning how that I wanted in that, um, in that reference piece. So the best layers that you're going to want to layer styles that you have to do this for are probably going to be overlay or soft light just depending on what you want. Um, I'm not an expert on what each of these do. I know generally what they do, but a lot of it's just kind of messing around with the different layer modes and seeing what ends up looking the best. So what, what I wanted to do, and as you can see, this adds oops, this adds a lot more kind of little photoreal elements that I wouldn't have had otherwise, right? So it adds in these this sort of extra grime and uh, missing floorboards that I think really helps to add to the foreground. And again, I just added a little more darkening behind this plaster one to add shadows and to make it seem like a little mildewy, a little less uh, kept up. And then here is the fog that I added. So this is, again, it's a lightened layer. And it's a little uh, more, it's a little greenish gray. And what I've done here is basically you take, um, you ma use a mask and you um, click on, you command click uh, mask, so control click on PC, on the mist pass. You control click, and that gives you the pixel information of that pass. Then what you do is you just apply it to the mask, and it gives you uh, that sort of that effect. And this, obviously, this really helps to add a lot of volume to the image as well as depth. And what I really wanted this to do is add atmosphere, like there's like a bunch of little dust particles floating around in it. And here is a little painting over that I've done. As you can see, like I have all these really bright image, these really bright light source spots, and I really wanted to focus on this main uh, source of my light. So what I've done is basically I've just added a bunch of boards and whatnot to cover up. I'll just leave it. I think I have a layer on here. But yeah, so basically what this does is it's just covering up all these little light sources to really kind of hone in on this focal light source. 
After this, I just did a little painting over of this pipe up here to try and integrate it a little more. All right. And now I come to um, doing the figures. All right, so here's the first dude. Oh, one of the layers is messed up, I think. Well, that's okay. I'll just leave it for now. No, no issue. All right. So here's the people. What I've done is I found a lot of reference, uh, especially like protests, um, where those are a really good reference because those are showing like a lot of makeshift armor and shapes like this shield is really nice, etc. So, uh, here we go, let me turn that off. Basically, it's just going through and finding the right Im um, images that work to like get what you need. Now going through, here's the second guy. Here we go. Okay, something is up. Oh, here we go. Render passes. There we go. I was dumb. Sorry. I had my missed pass on and it was kind of messing things up. All right. And then here's the second figure. The idea behind adding the second one is I had this first one. I was like, he's kind of just sitting in the middle of the image. So I wanted to add another one to sort of offset that and also to tell a little more of a story. So I added this second guy to just kind of, one, make it feel a little more lived in, but also to make it feel like, oh, this, this guy in the middle could be walking towards this dude to have a conversation or to confront him. I kind of wanted to leave that up to the viewer just because I think that's a little more fun sometimes. And the way that we, I've done these characters is you basically find, again, it's basically just photo bashing and photo manipulation. Um, so basically what you do, let's see if I can put all these layers together is you find your main image of the character and this is kind of your main shadow shape so what i've done is i've taken it and i have integrated it into the photo and what you can do for that is it's called a uh, matte color in photoshop oh that just mutes me okay so i can't use that while i'm using discord but um image yeah there we go okay so basically what you do is you color match this and it what that does is it kind of brings in the pixel information of a layer that you choose and it lets you um, match together all the sort of colors so that it looks better and after that i just kind of messed around with the curves to try and integrate it better and then to add the light sources to this um, what you do is basically you duplicate the layer and you brighten it up a ton and you change the color of the light a little bit see if i turn this off you can see it's just the brightened ones and then you move your shadow your, your shadow shape to the top and you kind of just mask it where the light would hit so obviously hitting heaven's arm and whatnot so again a lot of this is just finding the right images so reference is key like i found all these images before i started painting and that saves you so much time so just make reference again reference finding the right images is key beforehand and it'll save you so much time it's like if you're painting and you get derailed and end up having to go on a giant chase to look for exactly the right image it's not fun i've done that it's not something you want to do well you can it's i don't know it's just not how my workflow works the best and here I just paint it over to, to try and um, intensify the shadows a little more. Um, and then finally, I'll just add, um, what's this? This is, just my, this is just the layer that I have to flatten everything out so I can add some final effects on top of it. What I've added here is just a uh, um, high pass. What this does, it's gonna be pretty subtle, but what it does is, but you can see this is the actual layer. So what it does is it just grabs edges and kind of defines them some more. And what you do from here is you just set it to overlay. And it, see if you, if you zoom in a little bit, you can see it just kind of helps sharpen everything up. And finally, I just added a little noise in here in order to, again, try and flatten everything down. All right, I think 
that is everything for this image. So I will be opening it up to Q and A if anybody wants. Sorry, this was a little short, but uh, I'm here to talk for as long as anybody needs. Did you, um, the in Blender, did you like grab those assets from somewhere or did you model yeah. like the mattresses? Um, so it was probably about, uh, I probably modeled about 40% of the things. And what I've modeled, let me pull up Blender then. What I modeled mostly was this, um, was the walls and the main structure. For a lot of the set dressing, you can find a lot of, um, Free models that you can use on a website called Turbo Squid, um, Sketchfab. There's a lot of free models you can use, and I'm also using something called Mega Scans, and that's uh, it's basically a, a collection of photo scanned assets that you can use. Um, one warning: if you do decide to use this for like set dressing and debris, though, is um, it is twenty bucks a month for this library for um, personal and commercial use for um, personal, like they have this personal plan. You can use them all for free, unlimited if you want, but you can only export them into Unreal Engine, you need Unreal 4 if you do that. So it's kind of a mixed bag, like you can experiment with it if you want, it's really useful. Like you can just see there's all these 3D assets. Um, you can just go in and grab, there's like surfaces and stuff like if I just wanted like a bark, there's a bunch I can choose from. You can see, and I can, and there's a, a bridge, so you can just export it straight into Blender. But I use that a lot, and as well, like this gun rack and these guns that I, I modeled those. Um, I found this on Turbo Squid. Uh, I, ju I just um, made made these, they're just cloth simulations with um, some textures that I built on top of it. Cool, thanks. Yeah, um, here, let me pull up my reference again. So, there it's on that screen. All right. So, basically, given off, going off the brief that I had, um, I knew it was going to be, obviously, in, like, in Last of Us, kind of Last of Us Days Gone style. There's obviously not a lot of electricity, so I knew it was going to come mainly from natural light sources. So I ended up looking up a bunch of those, right? And I knew that since it was going to be um, more abandoned, there would be a lot of dust in the air. So there would be a lot of kind of light scatter, a lot more light scatter. So the, I mean, because of the brief, there was there were some constraints with the light, right? I knew I wanted wanted it to be in the daytime so I could see everything. So that means it's going to be a warm light source um because i really wanted and then because i knew i wanted those interesting shadow shapes from the window like being cast i knew it was going to be a, a sunny day so that kind of constrains you to warm light source with a harsher sun and to counteract that like as i said i added a cold light source and coming in from the right to try and balance the piece out a little more if that makes sense honestly I didn't really have too much of an idea for the lighting. I mean, I knew it was going to be natural light again. So you just starting, you just start Googling like, like natural light images or just like abandoned houses and you find, um, and obviously the Google algorithm kind of helps because you find images that you want and it gives you more like those. But what I do mainly is I basically just look around until I find something that really kind of hits the mood that I want specifically. And what's great about this is because it's, in 3D, it's so malleable. It's not hard to, like, I, if I just was painting all this, I'd obviously have to go through. If I found a lighting that I liked and I wanted to change it, I have to erase all the lighting, paint it all up again. Three, I can just rotate the light around and mess with, like, the um, fog and the fog settings. So that really helps to make it a lot more iterative. So it's not like I have, like, a bunch of iterations that I'm, like, screen grabbing. Is I'm just kind of rotating stuff around, messing with settings until I find something that I, find, I think works. Um, obviously, again, 3D, obviously, that's for how all the assets are made, but um, specifically, again, in concept art, I use it a lot for interiors because that, I mean, if I don't have to go through and build the perspective out myself, like, why would I? It saves so much time. So mainly, it's a time saver, but it also helps me iterate a lot quicker. Um, I think I 
this is something I wanted to mention at the start. So all these environments like I do, obviously like Nariel talked about in her in her talk, they're not the majority of what you're gonna do. Like if you start out on the Beyond Skyrim team, you're gonna be doing assets and stuff. But the point of these images mainly, um, like the, the polish environments, is to help the level designers um, is to help the level designers figure out the mood and sort of general feel they want for an area. So here I can bring up an example. This is one I did for Cyrodiil. This is um, the canals on the Imperial Isle. Um, they're being landscaped right now, and I just saw some of the image in there. It's coming out really well. So the level designer told me, he's like, hey, like, hey, your concept is really helpful help me, helping me figure out the distribution of how cluttered it was, what, what the sort of mood and the sort of um, design aspects of the area are that obviously previously weren't able to be done. Oh, how do you avoid quicks on the makes your texture to stretch? Um, I don't use Quixel Mixer. I mainly just import the textures straight from Megascans. And what I'll do generally is I just set the coordinates to generated in a coordinate mapping node. And I'll just scale it to make it fit. Um, something that you can also do is you can set the image, the like texture image to box. Um, go to Blender. What you can do to help avoid stretching. One is uh, I just set it to generate it so that way I don't have to worry about UV mapping because I don't need it to be incredibly precise because if it doesn't work, I can just paint over it. That's the beauty of going from 3D to 2D. Um, yeah, to avoid stretching, what you can do is you can do that as well as I set it to box a lot. so. That way, it makes sure the generated um, corner kind of knows that, hey, this is a 3D object. It's not like we're just trying to put it onto a plane. And if I was using UVs, I would want to make sure this is set to flat. But since I'm not, I want to make sure it's all on box. So that way, there's uh, minimal stretching. 